Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I got Brandon Smith on the line with me today, very special guest, and we're going to be discussing the economy here from an alternative viewpoint. And this is very close to my heart. This is something I feel that I've gravitated towards over the years. And uh, Brandon has a, a similar story and a similar passion, and he covers the economy. And he, he really counters the mainstream economic propaganda uh, using his tools, his predictive analysis. And he's an, a thought leader in the community. His website is alt-market.com. Brandon Smith, thanks for coming on Crush the Street with me today. Thanks for having me on the show. Brandon, I'd love to get started here by how you got involved and, you know, what led you down this road of alternative economics? What does that even mean to you? Well, I suppose alternative economics is uh, the analysis of the economy using uh, data points and fundamentals outside of the mainstream, the, the, the kind of data points that the mainstream either ignores or that they misrepresent. And uh, I suppose I started into economic study back in probably 1999, um, right out of high school, I got interested in uh, just globalization in general and how it worked and, and sort of the dangers behind global, globalism. And I kind of went from there. I didn't, I don't think I really, it really dawned on me to write economic analysis uh, until around 2006, when I started to see some some issues, especially with uh, the credit bubble and the uh, stock market bubble at that time. And around 2006 is when I started writing. Um, I I don't think I got much attention until after the credit crash of 2008, and that's when I started to get a lot of attention for my work. Mm. No, that's true, right? You know, and sometimes it needs to something needs to happen and then the audience needs to be ready to, to, to listen to you. And, and I think the, the credit crisis and, and the financial crisis of 2008 woke up a lot of people. And uh, thanks to the internet, right? You know, it was the first real crash that we went through where the inter internet was being used to a large degree to share information that wasn't filtered by the mainstream media, you know, the big, you know, few that are out there that monopolize the news. So, you know, you're, we're constantly countering the mainstream. And, you know, I wonder, why do you suppose there's so much propaganda out there to contradict? And what's the agenda? Well, I think the, uh, if you want to cut right to the root of everything, I think the agenda is globalism and globalization and, and the people that, uh, own and run and maintain uh, media, mainstream media outlets have that agenda in mind. They're, they're globalists. They support the uh, concept of globalization and the, you know, the implement, implementation of certain measures to get to total globalization. So uh, I think that's the overall agenda. And there's, you know, there's also, there's sometimes there's countering agendas and there's, <laughs> you know, not everyone is on the same page in these places. They're not, they're not all, you know, not everyone that works at, C at CNN is, uh, uh, you know, privy to the conspiracy or anything like that. Uh, you know, I don't believe that. I think that people have their own personal agendas and they kind of tie in to the bigger agenda at some of these uh, media outlets. Yeah, that, that's true. Well, you know, getting into globalization and, you know, in light of what we've seen with Donald Trump, you know, he was somebody who really spoke out against that and kind of ran as that alternative type of candidate that was going to come in from the outside and address some of these things. I mean, he was even interviewed on Alex Jones and he even alluded to some of the things that, you know, we're kind of talking about here, this globalist idea. He supported Brexit. He is really about, you know, America first, you know, despite certain, you know, sort of principles that, you know, libertarians might say, oh, well, you know, trade wars are bad, this, that, and the other thing. But he's really trying to put America first, at least in my opinion. But 
Uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on that, you know, what we're seeing here with Trump and the disruption of the globalist agenda, in your opinion. Well, my view, I, I think a lot of people would not agree with my views of Trump. Um, I, I would say it, he started out he started out strong, especially during the campaign. He started out, um, he was saying all the right things. Um, unfortunately, pretty much right after he got into the Oval Office, he started introducing, uh, you know, numerous people with globalist backgrounds into the cabinet, into the presidential cabinet, which is why I'm, I remain skeptical or reticent of whether or not Trump is going to follow through with the promises that he made during his campaign. I'm, I'm pretty much convinced that he has too many globalists over his shoulder at this stage in order to uh, accomplish much. Um, and, you know, it's hard to say whether, you know, there's a lot of people that believe there's an internal battle within the White House between uh, Trump and uh, patriot-minded individuals and the globalists that are that are lurking in the White House. But, you know, he, he brought those people in and either that was a mistake or it was deliberate, <laughs> but they're there. So, uh, yeah, my, my view of Trump is that it's, it's uh, you know, in the worst case, the best case scenario is that he's in a in a internal battle with the globals within the White House. The worst case scenario is that they are his friends. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, a good way to put it. Uh, so, on the economic front, what are your thoughts at the moment? Uh, we have a situation where even Donald Trump called it a bubble. You know, I spoke with a state legislator in Washington last Thursday. And we had a discussion and off the record, I asked him, you know, what is, what's going on with the 21 trillion, the reckless spending? He's like, you know, honestly, it's going to come to an end and it's not going to be good, but I, I can't think about it. It's just, it's almost like, you know, in that movie, Wolf of Wall Street, it's Fugazi. It doesn't exist. You know, it's just, it's just in the background, but in reality, fundamentals ultimately matter. And even this, this representative said it's going to happen. But uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, as far as uh, spending, as far as government spending, uh, the, you know, the national debt, I think a lot of people are aware the national debt, uh, national debt doubled in the eight years that Obama was in the White House uh, from around 10 trillion to closing in on 20 trillion. Uh, I, I would say that that situation has not improved so far since Trump has gone into office, a lot of, there was a lot of talk of cuts and, uh, you know, getting back to basics as far as government spending and reducing government, making it smaller. And I haven't seen that yet. Uh, so far, what we've seen is expanded uh, spending. We've seen a, a larger deficit. We've seen uh, expanded uh, spending and an expanding national debt. Uh, we've also seen infrastructure, very expensive infrastructure programs. I believe it, the the one they passed was either 1.4, 1.5 trillion. Then that's on top of uh, the the normal annual budget. So um, spending has only expanded, and the national debt will only expand. And of course, the national debt that's the, that's the official number. That's not uh, taking into account um, entitlement programs and numerous other expenditures um, that they consider to be, uh, you know, down the road expenditures, which is not generally not the case. Usually uh, portions of entitlements are always being, uh, those, those are always adding to our true national debt. So I, I don't, I don't see the situation lasting much longer. Um, we're already officially at, uh, the debt is already officially at over a hundred percent of GDP. Um, you know, not counting, uh, not accounting for entitlements. So uh, I, I really think that on that end of things, it's uh, the only issue here is that with the trade war situation and with the world reserve status of the dollar at risk in that fight, I think that there will be a crisis before we ever get to the issue of debt. Um, if we, I would say if we went for another four years 
on the current debt path, then the debt would cause the crash. But I think there's going to be an, an event before that, that that causes a crash. Brandon, um, yeah, that's uh, something that we talk a lot about here. And it's a, such a difficult thing to anticipate. You know, one of the things we are seeing with Trump is this enthusiasm. And it's crazy how much sentiment plays a role in what people are going to do going forward. You know, and because sentiment has become so strong during the Trump presidency, despite fundamentals, again, it's always in despite of fundamentals, um, you know, we've seen money come back into the country. We've seen businesses thrive. We've seen even employment get a little better, wages go up. Um, you know, is this short-lived? I mean, what, what, are, what are you thinking is going to happen on a, on a real basis? And how do you prepare financially for all of this chaos that's kind of working together? Well, I think as, as far as, you know, I, I've talked with people in the past, especially in the past year, uh, about the general state of the economy and what they think is happening. And some people will say, you know, I, it seems like I see an improvement. There's uh, new businesses going up in my town. There's new construction. Uh, the property market seems to be improving a little bit. Um, there's there's more jobs. In fact, some some uh, businesses they they can't find people to fill the positions for for uh, their employment. So um, I think a lot of that is it's not what it appears to be. It's not as much of an improve of an an improvement as it appears to be. Um, partially because what we're seeing is a massive spike in debt across the board. So uh, as corporate debt, for example, is at near historic highs. It's it's nearing highs that we didn't see or that we haven't seen since 2008, right before the credit crash. Um, uh, consumer credit and consumer debt is spiking beyond all measure as at historic highs. Um, so business debt uh, is spiking. And what we're seeing here, I think, is the initial stages or or the the facade or the illusion of improvement because so many businesses and individuals are taking on so much debt right now um, from you know after the credit crisis up through probably uh, 2015 uh, what we saw was a lockdown on credit and the flow of credit because of the the credit crash and so it seemed as though well it didn't seem it it was clear that things were were uh, in decline now with a little more freer credit it seems as though things are improving that's not really the case i think a lot of it is debt based it's not um you know it's not based on savings it's not based on true capital yeah, that's a powerful thing. And really interesting what you were saying about, you know, Trump and how he's expanding the debt to levels that, you know, would make Democrats or, you know, tr traditionally uh, big government spenders cringe. But, you know, it's a Republican and a Democrat thing. You know, you, you they say one thing, but they mean another. And they're all about expanding the national debt. Um, you know, but I guess one could argue that, you know, certain spending is more productive than others, you know, and that's a whole other can of worms. So having said this, Brandon, you know, what do we do with our money? Where's the safe haven? You know, how do we de-risk, uh, all of these uncertainties that are going on in the economy going forward? Well, it would seem for now that the, the, the property market is... <laughs> sort of the one of the one of the better places not necessarily commercial property but um you know basic the basic property market uh homes and homes and uh, raw land seems to be a good place to put money uh you know where i live in montana the the prices have sort of skyrocketed and i think that's more due to um inflation and property tends to keep pace with inflation. It's funny, back years ago, I had uh, some people argue with me about if I thought that uh, inflation was going to be the uh, 
ultimate outcome of the situation with the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve stimulus, then why don't I uh, purchase a bunch of land? And I told them, you, you should you should jump into some property because I do think it will maintain its value or it will will uh, jump in value along with inflation. And that seems to be exactly what's happening. Um, at this point, I think it's impossible for, especially for the millennial generation or beyond them, I, I think it will be impossible for them to get into the property market, uh, except for maybe a select few. Um, the, the prices are uh, skyrocketing all, all across the board. Also, I think, you know, ultimately gold and silver i'm i'm always going to promote gold and silver as a safe haven for your savings because it ultimately whenever there's a crisis and there there will be inevitably this will result in a major crisis uh, looking at all the fundamentals, there's no way that it can be avoided. And whenever there is a an economic crisis, gold and silver skyrocket. Um, you know, and also we're looking at major inflationary pressures. Now, those gold and silver markets are manipulated to the downside, at least for now. But as soon as there's a crisis, I think that that's all going to be washed away, and we'll see true price discovery in gold and silver. Um, Beyond that, I think, you know, I'm a big proponent of um, preparedness, and I think, you know, everybody should have food storage. Everybody should have all the necessities that they they need to, you know, live from day to day, and they should have those stored. And that's a good place to uh, invest your money. If you don't have that, then uh, you know, no amount of gold and silver or property is going to save you. Well, that's a uh, good words right there. Uh, Brandon, if people want to learn more about what you're doing and the things that you're putting out on a regular basis, please let them know a little bit more about your website. Uh, well, they can just visit me at www.alt-market.com. That's alt-market.com. And I write on a whole uh, array of subjects from economics to geopolitics to preparedness and survival and uh otherwise i have to write on all that otherwise i would get bored i can't just write about the economy all the time so they're welcome to come uh, check out my website and uh, hopefully they'll be uh well informed and entertained brandon thanks for coming on crush the street i really appreciate your time with us today thanks for having me <laughs>